Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Cindy. I am 50 years old and I competed in my first bodybuilding competition just about two months ago in April. And I'm currently um, building. I plan to be in this build phase for approximately a year um, and then compete hopefully in nationals next summer. So in today's video, I wanted to take you through um, my leg training that I'm currently doing. Um, this is my first training block since my competition. It will probably change in a few weeks, um, but I've been here for the last seven weeks and I'll take you through um, today, Wednesday's leg training and then also Saturday's leg training. And then I will talk about how to structure an effective um, glute focused leg program so where you really want to grow your glutes and get those 3d glutes that everybody wants but especially important in the bikini category if you're interested in competing and there really are some essential components that you want to hit in um, planning out how to structure your leg day training so i'll show you uh, my two sessions and then i'll talk you through kind of the what I think are the four components that are um, really essential for um, glute and leg training. And I'll say this just from watching people in the gym, people do a tremendous amount of volume and repetitive volume, which you know, kind of we call junk volume in the industry, which is just like a lot of sets of similar exercises that are hitting the muscle similarly. So with glutes, you really wanna um, hit the muscle from different angles and different ways. Um, so I will kind of talk about those four categories of exercises, which hopefully will help you to build a really effective um, glute focused training program. So I will see you in uh, the next clip will probably be today's training, my Wednesday leg day. Um, and then um, I'll show you my Saturday leg day. And of course, I'll take you through my check-in on Saturday and any feedback from my coach. So I thought I would run you through a little voiceover of my workout. Um, this day I start with hip thrusts. I do five sets of these increasing in weight with each set. Um, I actually love this machine at Planet Fitness. I just feel like I connect with it really well. I try to hold that pause at the top uh, for a few seconds. And after that, I move on to abduction. I sort of hover on this machine. Um, that's how I feel it best in my upper outer glute doing the abduction. Um, and I do four sets of those. And then moving on to Romanian deadlifts with dumbbells, um, four sets of these. Um, generally use about 45 or 50 pounds in each hand. That's what feels good on the dumbbell deadlifts. And I keep the, the dumbbells slightly angled to the outside of my legs so that I don't feel it in my back at all and really try to press my feet, my toes down into the floor. Um, after that, I move on to unilateral um, Bulgarian split squats, and I do these twisting towards my standing leg to really try to hit that glute. Um, and I do, I think it's two sets of the Bulgarians on each side. And then moving on to machine work, so seated leg curl, um, three sets of these, try to go a little bit slower on the eccentric on the way up. I always have issues with my low back getting involved as I start to fatigue on these. So um, I try to really uh, wiggle into my seat and push back to keep my low back pinned to the bench. And then onto leg extensions, three sets of these. This is really the only direct quad work I do in my week um, is the leg extension. And last exercise are these cable kickbacks. I have my standing leg on a plate and then I angle my working leg so that my toes are pointing out to try to hit again that upper outer glute. And that's it for Wednesday's leg day. Good morning, YouTube. It is Saturday morning. We are into the month of June, June 8th today. Oh my goodness, this month is starting off with a bang. It's been nice and hot here in South Carolina. Um, we, uh, we built a pool this year, so we've been enjoying that. And um, I am about to head to the gym. I had um, meal one and I checked in this morning. And uh, I will include some side-by-side -side photos um, that my coach sent me after my check-in that show me at the same weight 
during prep versus now, um, which were really helpful for me to look at because it is so hard to see progress in your own body, but you can see in the side-by-side -side photos that there's more muscle density at the same weight. So that that's like so reassuring going through this process because just seeing the scale weight go up and not being able to know whether that's fat or muscle or what is often disconcerting. Uh, the nice part is, you know, what I kind of hang my hat on is that all my clothes fit the same. So if I've put on some body fat, you know, there's also probably just some muscle glycogen and water that's, you know, from eating in a calorie surplus and then hopefully a little bit of lean tissue has been added in the last two months. So two months into this improvement season, another 10 plus months to go, targeting next summer, 2025 uh, for nationals, maybe a warm up show in the spring before that. But yeah, we've got plenty of time in this improvement season. My coach also said probably like midway through, we'll do a mini cut, um, you know, if there's extra body fat. So you know, she's definitely keeping an eye on things, making sure we're going in the right direction. So today I have legs. I will do my best to film most, if not all of the exercises, depending how crowded the gym is. And then um, what I really wanted to talk about today was um, I've showed you, or I will show you my two leg days. So why don't I insert actually today's um, leg session here, and then I'll come back on and talk about uh, my favorite exercises to build glutes. So for Saturday's leg day, um, I typically start with the belt squat, but when I did my first warm up set, I felt that my left adductor had a little strain. It was painful. So I cut out the belt squat entirely, went straight to standing hip thrusts, and did five sets of these, increasing in weight each set. I really love this machine. And then moved on to barbell Romanian deadlifts, four sets of these. I do them in my socks, really trying to press down all the toes, but especially that big toe into the ground so that I'm not using my back. Um, this is my favorite form of Romanian deadlift is the barbell. I'm trying to keep that bar really close to my legs. And then moving on to leg press, I have five sets of these. Typically the first three sets I'll have my feet high and wide, but I skip that sumo stance completely because of my adductor. So I did all of them with my feet close together on the platform. And then uh, walking lunges, again, did not get as deep on these as I usually, usually have my knee completely touched down, but because of the adductor went easy. And then these step downs where I really try to reach my foot all the way back and get that good um, glute activation in the working leg. The back toe is just touching down. It's really not helping me lift off. Didn't get a great angle here, but these are glute hyperextensions. Um, I have a plate hugged to my chest, keeping my, the, my back rounded. It's a really great glute isolation exercise. And that was it for Saturday's leg day. So essentially, um, something I learned from Brett Contreras, who is the glute god <laughs> or the glute guy, he's sort of the person who takes uh, credit for inventing the hip thrust. Um, and he has his glute lab down in Florida where he's always just trying to figure out the best exercises to build 3D glutes. And a lot of the IFBB professionals go to him in bikini and wellness to really learn how to build their glutes. So he's kind of an expert at how to build a good glute program. And I watch you know, him on Instagram all the time and I'm always learning, we're always learning. So um, nobody's an expert in anything. You know, the science is always changing and there's always, you know, your own body too and what you connect with and where you feel that mind-muscle connection best, which is different for everybody. So it does take some experimenting to see. I've noticed sometimes dropping the weight, I have better mind-muscle connections, so little things that you learn along the way. But I wanted to talk about the big four categories when building your glute program. And within those categories, which exercises I like the best and that feel the best in my body. So the first category is the squat lunge pattern. So you really only need one exercise in this category when building your glute program on any given day. So I noticed in prep when I went to three lower body days that the frequency matters, uh, for me at least, 
to see change. So rather than killing myself in a single session that takes me, you know, four or five days to recover from, I'm better off spreading out my lower body sessions more frequently during the week. Right now I have them two days a week and I'm hoping the next block we go to three days again. But basically, you know, choose one exercise from the squat lunge group. So for me, the ones that I gravitate to the most are the belt squat, mostly because I'm just able to go heavier than a back squat where I have weight on my back. It's also less taxing on my central nervous system, so I recover easier from it. So belt squat's a big one for me. I love walking lunges. They hit my glutes perfectly. Um, I don't love them. They're hard, but they're effective. Um, another one that I like is the deficit lunge. So reverse lunge with one, your front foot elevated and trying to keep all that weight in the front foot. So the back foot is really just stabilizing. Um, so I love the deficit reverse lunge. You can do it on a Smith machine. You can do it with dumbbells. You can do it with no weight and just body weight. Um, so those are my three favorites from the squat lunge group. And you can also play around with foot position here, doing more sumo is going to hit more adductor um, and just seeing where you feel the glutes best. Um, the next category is uh, hip hinge. So some hip hinge movements that you'll often see bikini competitors do are the Romanian deadlifts. We don't often lift from the floor in bikini, like doing, you know, a, a traditional deadlift or a sumo deadlift. Um, sumo can be a little bit more adductors and glutes, but um, the most common thing you'll see is Romanian deadlifts, and my favorite with this is the barbell Romanian deadlift. I just feel I can go the heaviest on barbell, and it just feels best to me. And I do these either barefoot or in my Vibram five fingers because I found that pressure through the toes when I'm doing my Romanian deadlift prevents any low back pain. I used to always have low back pain after deadlifting, but I found as long as I press down through my big toe and really keep all of my toes in contact with the ground pressing down, um, it keeps it in my legs and my glutes. And you know, that slight bend in the knee, you're hitting more glutes. So I really like barbell, but you can definitely do dumbbell as well. You can also do these on the Smith machine. Nice part about the Smith is that you're able to really pull backwards. So I look at the Romanian deadlift as more of a horizontal movement instead of vertical in space. In other words, you really want to stop the bar or the dumbbells when you get to the point that you can't send your hips back any further. So I find using the Smith machine, you can really focus on extending those hips back. So sometimes I will use Smith machine, but my preference is the barbell. Um, and the next movement that um, is an important part of any glute program is glute isolation movements. And those could be kickbacks either on the cables or if you have a machine in your gym for kickbacks. The machine in my gym that, that is for kickbacks, I feel more in my quads, so I don't really use it. And with the cables, you can do so many different variations to get the glute med, the glute min, different parts of the glute. So that's a really nice isolation movement. Um, and you know anything that is <clears throat> gonna focus on that isometric hold of the glutes, so in the shortened position, so it could also be the hyperextension. Um, you can use you know, a plate or dumbbells and really round through the back, lift up and squeeze the glutes as an isolation. And in this category would also be things like hip thrust or standing hip thrust, which is a new machine that my gym got that I absolutely love. It just feels so different than doing a horizontal hip thrust. I really like the standing one. So that would be the third category. And the last category is abduction. So something where you are, you know, moving your knees apart from each other. So it could be the seated machine abduction. If your gym has the gluteator, um, that's a fantastic machine because you're moving out and down. We don't have that, unfortunately. You can also do this with a plate on one hip, just lifting up. Uh, you can do it with a band, so banded abductions. And that can even be how you warm up your glutes and activate your glutes before you start the rest of your training, is to use the band to do some abduction, either kneeling or, sit or sitting, you know, any of those variations, but some form of abduction. So um, if you've got all four categories across the week, they don't all have to be in the same workout. Um, then you know you're really hitting your glutes from every angle and you're you know getting the most bang for your buck. 
So that's how you want to structure um, glute training. So I hope that that was helpful for you. And if you have questions about anything that I've talked about in terms of how to train your glutes, feel free to drop those questions here. This is my mission. I have about 400 days until, you know, Masters Nationals and glutes are probably the area I need to build the most if I want to be competitive on a national stage. So we working, we working. Glutes are very stubborn, at least for me. Um, very hard for me to feel my glutes sometimes, especially once I start to get tired in my training, then my hamstrings take over, my quads take over, and I don't feel my glutes anymore. So they're just a really stubborn muscle for most people to use, which is why a lot of people as they get older have low back pain because their glutes are so weak. So I tend to program a lot of glutes for all of my clients that are over the age of 40 because it's just such an important stabilizer to keep the, you know, pain out of your back, basically. You just want really strong glutes. So whether it's aesthetically, you know, pleasing or not is not really the issue. Glutes are important functionally, um, but for bikini, aesthetically, they're really important. So yes, the goal this year is glute density. Um, so I hope that was helpful. And like I said, if there's anything else you want me to talk about in these videos, feel free to drop it below. Uh, I, filming my training is not fun for me. I don't enjoy doing it, but I know that people enjoy seeing it. So I'm happy to do that. And uh, yeah, and I hopefully have gotten to most of the uh, questions people have asked, things that they've asked me to talk about in videos. I know somebody was asking about my macros between prep and now. Um, so I talked ad nauseum about the changes to my macros every week of prep. They were different every week. Um, they've been the same for quite a while now in my improvement season. I know we're going to drop them down next week. Um, not this coming week, but the week after because I won't be able to train after my surgery. Um, and then we'll see where we go from there. I'm not sure if we're going to keep going up in calories or not. My weight's been pretty stable the last couple weeks. Um, and so that was why my coach really sent me those side-by-sides just to show me like, this is kind of my happy weight where my body settles. Um, so hopefully we won't go up too much more because um, it takes my brain a few weeks to catch up as my weight goes up. <laughs> so that's all I have for you today. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I hope you will to follow along on my journey. Uh, really looking to inspire people 40 plus that it's never too late to get into fitness and to get those physique goals that you've been wanting. So um, I'll see you in the next one.